All right, guys. These are the uh, sports bins that I picked up on uh, what to look for when you buy uh, used heads. Well, I knew these were beat, but wow, they're impressively beat. They were so beat that I had to increase the valve size considerably. They're really cut for 2.1s, but I couldn't find a 2.1 valve. I know I got a couple over in storage, so I stuck a 2.125 for my AFR 220s. And uh, the 1.6 exhausts, they cleaned up pretty well. They were actually in a lot better shape, probably because they were lighter and they didn't uh, they didn't float as badly and just eat the seats up. The 205 seats were really in bad shape. Okay, you can see it's a first cut, so all it got was a rough out. And if you take a look... I used a super rough finish on this. I think we're going to uh, we're going to make that the question for this this video. How can you possibly make a finish that rough on iron? We'll see. We'll see if anyone catches on. The uh, the answer from the last video why I used a rougher texture on the outside of the bowl versus the inside of the bowl. Okay, when the air is coming through, right, this side as and you know what we had a lot of we had a lot of really good comments on that. One of the comments was it's a hot wall because it's next to the exhaust so you're not going to get any fuel puddling here and he's absolutely right the other thing is if we were to run a string in here while the engine was running it wouldn't be on this side it would be on this side this is the air wants the shortest the shortest path and it wants to come out through this side okay it wants to come along the roof and right out. Actually, a lot of it follows right on the short side radius and out. All right. So, why did I put a rougher texture on this side? Well, in one of DV's books, he has a drawing on how to make air go around a corner more efficiently. Let me draw a quick one of, of that and uh, we'll discuss it. Okay, excuse my crappy drawings, but on the left, we've got a, a pipe with a with a bend in it, right? Like a port. Okay. This is going to have a lot more losses than this one, right? If we bulge out the outside, even bulge out the inside, the air's got a chance to slow down and make that turn, right? And you lose a lot less flow efficiency that way. Well, I was actually thinking of this drawing when I did that uh, bowl, and I was thinking that the air on the outside is got, it was able to slow down enough that some fuel could fall out of suspension. So what do you think the rougher texture was for? Reintroduce that fuel. So a couple guys got it, but they didn't know how it was working. So I, I actually give them extra credit. Now, does it work in practice? I don't know. I just thought of it the other day when I was doing those Ford heads. I was, uh, I was widening the bowl in that spot with a very aggressive uh, round burr, which really left a nasty, nasty uh, pattern. And then when I looked at it, I go, I like that. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to see how that works. So, back to these. Okay. Yeah, I had to uh, I had to sink the valves considerably on the intakes, but they're much bigger valves, so it's the, the the stem height isn't really bad. The exhaust, the seats really weren't that bad. I did my little I did a very very rough radius, and I took some metal out of the port itself. Okay, a quick look down the the port. I opened up the pinch. A decent amount according to a quick calculation it says the pinch can flow 314 
Well, I've heard of guys getting about about 315 out of these heads. Now, they start out off with a 200cc runner, so it's a good size runner. But take a look. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. Take a look at how incredibly high that short side radius is. It's, it's very similar to those uh, Dart 165s. Oh, you can see I got, I got to do a lot more work on that inside edge of that uh, short side radius. Cylinder wall side is not good. Okay. Okay. You can take a look on the inside. You can still see where the bolt boss is. I really didn't take out much much metal from that. Really didn't take out much from the roof. I kind of uh, just gave it a quick cleanup more than anything else and see what kind of flow change we're going to get with the bigger valve. All right, I'm not a really huge fan of these exhaust ports. They're, they are nice and deep. They got a nice deep bowl to them, which is great. And then they turn and they have a big square exhaust. Actually, they're quite similar to the, the dart exhausts. But for some reason, when I, I did some work to these, you'll see the flow numbers went down considerably. So whether it's because I used a, a very rough texture on it, because I just literally roughed it out and left it that way for some testing, or I got something else going on. It may have been, it may have a lot to do with the seats actually being worn. They're not, they're not flat angles, they're, they're rounded. <laughs> So, uh, you like a radius seat. It had practically a radius seat. Now, why don't we use radius seats? There's a couple different reasons. I mean, you know, if you put a radius on an intake, it'll flow more, but you'll lose power because you're, you're losing that, the shearing angles to shear the fuel, supposedly. I haven't done any testing on that. Of course, if your fuel prep is perfect, it wouldn't matter. You, you'd be able to... Uh, run a radius on there and, and make more power, right? Okay, I round the exhaust exit a little bit because the square exit just makes me ill. So I hate making it bigger because it's already huge, but I, the, just changing the shape a little bit helps my stress level. Okay, relatively big angled exhaust. Okay, for our flows, Okay, these are what we got with the 205s as they were received. I just took some carbon off. This is with the 1.6 as we received. Take a look. This is with the 2.125, which is really a little bit too big for the seat. Okay, and we got one minus and we got plus, plus, plus all the way down. All right, we got a decent pickup at 300. We got a decent pickup at 400. At 500, by the time we're at, at 500 is, is maxed out. I think it hit 282, which which is about what my my bow ties that I had on the Chevelle in the 90s did, because uh, I still have those, and they made uh, they made excellent power on a 383. So got to remember that's just the first cut. So we're going to work on that from there. I took some air speeds. We're going to work our way up. The exhaust, even though I took a lot of that boss out, lost everywhere compared to the original. So I got to figure out why. I mean, as far as the air speeds on the exhaust, right? The second, the, the air speeds on the right are after the first cut. Take a look at this corner. This corner absolutely died. Right? We went up, up, and this side went down. All the flow went up to the roof. Okay, so that gives me a hint of what needs to be done. All right, guys, just a short one on the uh, Dart Sportsman's two, sport, Sportsman Twos. I'd like to uh, I'd like to get these around a, a 600 horsepower combination. You guys can do a little homework and, and tell me how much airflow I really need to uh, to get that done. And uh, I do have I do have a little surprise. Let's see, this is my 
my hundredth video, which is uh, interesting, and we're up to 900 plus subs, which is insane. Take a look at this little goodie that just showed up today. Now those are gonna. This is gonna be done up for our uh, AFR enforcer heads. This is. This is the kind of manifold, when I look at it, I say, Charlie, if you can't make some power out of that, you're a complete loser, because I'm kind of feeling it. Interesting how the original plenum is designed. Take a look at that. It's literally a sump in the middle, right? It's a sump in the middle and has a big lip for the center runners not to suck liquid fuel, right? They want the fuel to run down to the end runners. Why? They probably they probably run leaner, <laughs> right? Interesting, right? So you got to think about all those things. Unfortunately, I can't wet flow test it, but you can use a little logic and figure some stuff out too. In any case, it's a gorgeous piece. I can't wait to do some work on it, and uh, it's already it's already huge. So I don't. It's going to be more of a, a tune up as far as getting the runner uh, flows as even as I can than an outright full-on port job, I think. All right, guys. Have a good night.